the proxima hip system is indicated for primary hip arthroplasty when the surgeon wants to conserve bone and soft tissue and provide physiological loading to the proximal femur. The femoral metaphysis should have good quality supportive proximal bone medially and laterally. This is a 36 year old male patient with bilateral avascular necrosis. Pre-operative templating should be carried out to confirm femoral and acetabular sizing. There is advanced osteonecrosis involving greater than 50% of the head. With the patient in the lateral position, the hip is exposed through a posterior approach. To provide optimal visualization of the rim of the acetabulum, the femoral neck and the proximal femur. The proxima hip round the corner technique for femoral preparation is ideally suited to minimally invasive surgery. After complete exposure, the hip is dislocated. The head is decapitated at the level of the junction between the head and neck. The dimension of the prosthesis exactly matches that of the head. After thorough exposure of the acetabulum, it is reamed with sequential reamers. The key points in acetabular reaming are to create a hemispherical cavity with uniform bone implant contact, an adequate press fit for initial stability and placement of the prosthesis at the anatomic center of rotation of the hip joint. A reamer that is 6 to 8 millimeters smaller than the anticipated acetabular component should be chosen initially to deepen the acetabulum to the level determined by pre-operative templating. Reaming proceeds in 1 millimeter increments until the measured size on the template is actually reached. All reamers should be introduced in 45 degrees of abduction and 15 to 20 degrees of antiversion. When reaming has been completed and all the cartilage removed from the acetabulum, a trial cup is fitted in. When the surgeon is satisfied with the position and snug fit of the trial cup, the real implant is placed and hammered to the correct depth. The cup inserter is removed. The real cup is bigger than the last trial cup by one millimeter. The femoral canal is opened and defined using the Dipu Proxima Canal Finder Owl. The owl should be placed in the center area of the resected neck slightly laterally and posteriorly to open up the femoral canal. The canal is opened further by using a box osteotome. A round the corner technique is used in the preparation of the proximal femur. The lateral brooch, which has no medial teeth, is then used to clear space under the greater trochanter and to develop the brooch envelope laterally. The lateral brooch should also be brought into a neutral position. Anatomic broaching commences with the smallest appropriate left or right anatomic brooch available. Round the corner broaching is used to prevent excessive removal of trochanteric bone and allows the brooch to follow the natural geometry of the proximal femur in both the AP and mediolateral planes. When the first brooch is fully seated, its position must be checked using the external alignment guide. 
the broach is correctly seated in neutral alignment when the rod of the alignment guide follows the long axis of the femur in both the sagittal and coronal planes. The anatomic broaches should be removed in the same round the corner orientation to avoid any over broaching. Sequential round the corner broaching continues using successive broaches until a broach is rotationally stable and in a neutral position in the varus stroke valgus plane. The final implant size will correspond to the final broach used. Continuous force should be applied in a lateral direction to ensure a round the corner movement. The alignment of the broaches should be checked at regular intervals and adjusted if necessary. The final brooch should fit the proximal femur, making sure sufficient stable or good quality cancellous bone is left. The final brooch should be medially, anteriorly, posteriorly and rotationally stable. correct size of standard or high offset neck trial and modular head are selected to reproduce the patient's natural biomechanics. To optimize joint function and to increase stability, the largest diameter head possible should be selected. A trial reduction is performed and the hip assessed through a full range of movement to identify any instability or impingement. correct neck length and head diameter are chosen and assembled onto the prosthesis. The femur is now once again checked through a full range of movement in flexion and rotation and is found to be stable. Trial prosthesis is in and uh, now we are going to obtain uh, x-ray verification of the position. Okay. Right, okay, fine. Cover it. The definitive depo proxima implant is introduced into the broach envelope using the same round the corner technique using the stem inserter impactor. The implant must follow the path of the last brooch. The final implant should be seated as far into the brooch envelope as possible without undue force. The implant must be in neutral alignment before final impaction. Impaction with the inserter instrument is complete when the implant cannot progress any further and the poro coat is level with the neck cut. A change in intensity will be noted by the surgeon during impaction when final seating has been achieved. The definitive femoral head is attached, the hip is reduced and the wound is closed in the normal way. <laughs>